full control with the Fronio Solar Watt Pilot app. I welcome you to our today's webinar about our new software solution about the Solar Watt Pilot app. Today we are going to show you how you can configure your new Watt Pilot device and how you can take control of the device itself for optimal charging and of course how you can configure your device directly via the app. So the first step we want to go through today is the commissioning of the Watt Pilot itself. So this is really the step when you first um, take your Watt Pilot into service and you want to do the first commissioning via the app. So the first important step is that you download the Solar Watt Pilot app direct from your app store. So it is possible to download the app from the iOS app store or of course from the Google Play store. So whatever you have, Android or iOS device, you can download the app directly from there. After downloading the app, you can just start the app by directly clicking it and then the Watt Pilot app opens up. With the first commissioning, you have now two possibilities that you can choose from. So first of all, is that you, we can now connect a new Watt Pilot to your home Wi-Fi network. So the commissioning is all about bringing the Watt Pilot into your home Wi-Fi network to enable an internet connection and to have connection to other components. So therefore, our first point here is, would you like to connect a new Watt Pilot to your network? And this point you do when you have a new Watt Pilot that you want to configure it. The second point down here is, would you like to add an already connected Watt Pilot into your app? And this step you can take when you have an already existing Watt Pilot and you want to add a Watt Pilot to your personal app. So that would be the case, for example, when you have an existing Watt Pilot and you want other persons to have access to that device. So then you can add to your app uh, a new Watt Pilot. So this point we will go later on and we will start now with the new commissioning uh, with the connection of the Watt Pilot to a network. Therefore, of course, we have to accept the terms and conditions and after that we can click connect on the first point. Yeah, the first point now get started is that we have to connect to the hotspot of the Watt Pilot itself. So whenever you connect the Watt Pilot to your grid, then the hotspot is permanently active. So in this case, when you connect it to the AC grid, the, hot, uh, the hotspot stays active and whenever you want to connect to it, you have the possibility. So the hotspot is active all the time. You have now two possibilities, either as described as in the app, you can just connect to the hotspot. So in this case, we now open up our Wi-Fi settings of the phone and we want to connect to this mobile hotspot of the Watt Pilot. So in this case, we are now searching for different Wi-Fi, so for the hotspot, and therefore you see down below, um, the hotspot of the Watt Pilot is always called Watt Pilot, underline, and then the series number of the device. And to connect to this hotspot of the device, we are just clicking on the Watt Pilot, and then we have to enter our password to connect to the device itself. So the SSID and of course the password you can find very easily on our Watt Pilot reset card. So with the Watt Pilot reset card that comes standard with the device and on the Watt Pilot reset card there is written down the series number of the device, the hotspot SSID, so in this case the Watt Pilot with the end number 810 and then of course the hotspot key that you have to enter to connect to that Watt Pilot. So this hotspot key is now the password that we need one time only to connect the Watt Pilot to our app. Yeah, and on the right hand side you also see this QR code and with this QR code you can just scan it and then you have an automatic connection to the hotspot. So in case you don't want to enter the, the password, you can just scan this QR code and then you are instantly connected to the hotspot of the Watt Pilot. So of course, whenever you want to connect a new Watt Pilot, you need that reset card with data on it. Okay, no, now we are entering our password, our hotspot key. And after adding this password, we can connect to the Watt Pilot 
uh, to establish a connection. Yeah, what you now see is a service message that the internet is maybe not connected with that device and it is important that you accept that. So it is important that you accept this uh, network data and uh, that you have no internet connection that is of course clear because it is just a hotspot and therefore the phone tells you that there is no internet connection on it. So if that pops up, especially at iOS devices, please accept it that there is no data communication on that uh, to enable the connection to the WordPilot. So now we are connected to the hotspot of the WordPilot and next up is we switch back into the app. And what now happens, you see instantly down below, there is no charging button anymore. We have directly the button continue and then we can continue with the installation process. So next step is now, there, now we are connected to the hotspot and next step is we want to connect to our home Wi-Fi. So the next step is all about bringing the WordPilot into the home Wi-Fi to enable a home Wi-Fi connection, an internet connection for the WordPilot itself. So and here we find our home Wi-Fi. As you see, you can refresh the page if you didn't find the home Wi-Fi instantly. And now we want to connect with that home Wi-Fi. So in our case, this is now the Wi-Fi of the homeowner and we want to bring in the WordPilot into that home Wi-Fi. So all we need to do basically is select the home Wi-Fi and then of course, most important, to enter up the password that is needed uh, for the home Wi-Fi. So in this case, of course, it is, it is always good to know the password of that home Wi-Fi and then we can connect to this home Wi-Fi to bring the WordPilot online. Yeah, after putting in the password, we have to click to connect. And after that, we see we are connected to that home Wi-Fi and very important is this checkbox here that we see that the home Wi-Fi connection is stable and that we have a good connection to the home Wi-Fi. So down below, when we are now connected, we have to switch down to the bottom of the site and then we have here the button continue. This is very important that you click here on the button continue. Yeah, last step, the step two is now to enter a password for your WordPilot device. So now for connecting your WordPilot device to the internet and of course to access it later on from an internet connection, we have to select a password and this password can be selected by you. So you can choose a password, whatever you like, uh, to secure your uh, WordPilot from external people to access it. So whenever you want to connect to your WordPilot, you need that password. So please make sure to remember it. Yeah, and now you see we have the point get started. And now our step three is to enable an internet connection. So in this case, we can now activate our mobile phone data and again deactivate um, the uh, connection to the hotspot and just connect, for example, with our mobile data of the phone or of course with the home Wi-Fi network. So this is also not a problem. You can now either choose to uh, access the home Wi-Fi network or just implement the mobile data. So we are now disconnecting the hotspot and then last step is we click on finish and then we are connected to our new WordPilot and the commissioning process is over. And as you see, we are now connected to our device. You can see it up here. And then we have finished the commissioning process and are connected directly on the homepage of the WordPilot. Okay, so this is the first step about commissioning of a new WordPilot. And what I want to show you now is also the second step. And that second step, of course, in the commissioning process is to add an already existing WordPilot into your app to have access to a third party WordPilot, for example. And therefore, of course, again, we are clicking on the terms and conditions. And after that, we are now choosing our second commissioning possibility and we click here on add. 
Yeah, what's now? Uh, we have now to put in the serial number of the device. So every Watt Pilot has his uh, serial number. And of course, again, you can find that on the reset card of the specific device. So all you need is your serial number that you can see up below. And then of course, very important, uh, we need to have the password that was set in the commissioning process. So first of all, we are now typing in the serial number of the device. And after that, we have to put in the password that was set for that word pilot. And after entering the password, we can click on connect. And after that, you see, you are now connected to that new Watt Pilot. So you have now access to other Watt Pilots. So you can add as many Watt Pilots as you want. And of course, when you want to switch between the Watt Pilots that you have connected to your app, you can just go here and then you see all your Watt Pilots that are connected with your app and you have now access to multiple devices. So in this case, you can just choose from the list and access the Watt Pilot that you want to control. So as you see, the commissioning process is very easy. It is mostly about bringing the Watt Pilot into the home Wi-Fi to make sure that the Watt Pilot has an internet connection for different components, for PV surplus charging and other functions. So next up is the overview over the app. And next up, we want to show you the different functionalities that we have regarding our Watt Pilot app. And we want to show you what is possible with the Fonio Solar Watt Pilot app. So first up, what you see in your homepage of the Watt Pilot app, you can see here the start screen. And here you can instantly see if the Watt Pilot is charging or the charging process is stopped. So in our case, we now see here the most important information is up here. We see here that the charging process was stopped. Charging is on for nine minutes now. And in this case, zero kilowatts are going over the charger. We can see down below our um, most important functionality options. So here we see in this little app, we can choose the charging mode. So of course you can just click on it and then select the charging mode that you want to. Regarding the charging modes, we will talk specific later on. Then you can, of course, select your charging current very easily. So you can instantly uh, choose the charging current that you can charge with. So for example, you can do gently charging with lower amperage and you can, of course, do a fast charging with a high amperage. So you can either uh, variate that directly into the app or you can do it, of course, also on the device itself. So you can just press the button and therefore make sure that you can alternate the current that is charged with. Yeah, and the third button is then here, our clock symbol. And there you can configure it the next trip mode, but we will come to that later on. So as you see, the most important functionality is here written down on the homepage, on the start screen. And then after that, you can also have the status of the charging. So there you see, for example, what's happening with the charging process. As you see right now, the Watt Pilot started the charging process. It is now charging with 1.4 kilowatts of power. And uh, of course, that is due to the next strip mode in this case now. So you see the status. Also, what you see can here see is the range. You, so you're charging with eight kilometers per hour. And of course, you can see the kilowatt hours that was charged, so the energy demand, and of course, the total energy demand that goes over this Watt Pilot over the lifetime. Last information, also very interesting, is then the information, the connected Type 2 cable. In our case, this is a 32 amps Type 2 cable. We can see here the voltage per phase, and we can see, of course, the amperage per phase that is charged with. Down below, you also see the efficiency factor. So here you can see we are charging with 100% efficiency on phase one. Okay, next button is now here the detail button. And on details, you can see, of course, where your energy is coming from to charge up the electric vehicle. So in our case, we have here a battery storage. We have the photovoltaic system. So you can see 400 watts is coming from the photovoltaic system and one kilowatt is coming from the public grid. 
So there you can see where your energy flows are coming from. Also very interesting, of course, for visualization. And down below, again, you have your charging mode selector, you have your current selector, and you have your trip selector. Down below, again, you have the status range and information. So no matter what of the pages you are viewing, you have a very good overview over the charging process. So this will also tell you then, for example, during a nighttime charge when there is uh, energy coming from the stationary battery, you can also visualize it here. And of course, if you are drawing energy from the public grid or if you get your energy from your PV system. Yeah, after that, last point is then the price chart. And the price chart is, of course, important to know uh, when the energy from the grid is cheap. As you know, you can charge with flexible energy tariffs with our Watt Pilot. And therefore, you have the possibility to have a very easy visualization of that price chart. So you can instantly see when the energy tariff is cheap and when do you want to charge with cheap energy tariffs. So this is for the overview of the app. And as you can see, you can have a very easy visualization of the app and you can make sure that you have just a very easy way of visualization. So next up, we are going to talk about the low cost charging with variable electricity tariffs. And with that possibility, you have always the possibility to charge at the low cost. So whenever you want to, you can just implement a flexible energy tariff. So this is in Germany, our Fronius Luminastrom. And in Austria, we have the Avatar hourly tariff that you can use to charge whenever there is cheap and renewable energy from the grid. And you can, of course, with the Watt Pilot, use that renewable and cheap energy from the grid and charge your electric vehicle whenever the energy from the public grid is cheap as possible. So for implementing and for uh, configuring these variable energy tariffs, we have now the possibility to go down below here on the point settings. So here in the app under settings, you can see your different settings that we have available. So also in the settings, you can see here the current levels. Again, you can see the next trip mode, the cost optimization, the scheduler. And of course, down below also, you can set the brightness and the LED colors, as well as the time zone for the Watt Pilot. Okay, and now for our variable energy tariffs, we have here the point cost optimization. And we can click in dot into that cost optimization. And the first point that you can see here now is our flexible energy tariffs. So most important, of course, you can choose the country where you are in. So you can choose for now from the countries Germany. So this is the Fronius Lumina Strom tariff. And for Austria, we can use the uh, Avatar hourly tariff. So whenever you are in that country, you can save that country. Please always remember to hit the save button. This is very important that the configuration is saved. And after that, we can now here activate or deactivate our flexible energy tariff. So of course, this point is optional. And whenever you want to use that flexible energy tariffs, there is no must. You can just activate it here directly in the app. And down below, we can now set our eco mode threshold level. And that threshold level is very important to define for the Watt Pilot when the charging process should start. And after that, you can now set a very easy charging process. So with that, for example, it is possible to just set a different price level. So in our case, we can now set the eco mode price level, for example, to seven cents. And that makes sure that whenever the flexible energy tariff is below seven cents, so when the energy from the, from the grid is cheaper than seven cents, then the Watt Pilot will start the charging in the next trip mode and in the eco mode to make sure that your car is charged at a very cheap rate. Of course, after setting this, you can click the save button. Again, very important that the, that the rate is saved. And of course, also for other countries, we will come up with different energy tariffs uh, to make sure that also other countries have access to these flexible energy tariffs. Yeah, after that, you can do the visualization again. So we are going here on charging and then we can go here on the price tag. 
And then you see during the next 24 hours, uh, you have the actual price tag of the flexible energy tariff. And then you can see the actual cost per kilowatt hours. And after that, you have your visualization how the energy tariff is going to change over the next few hours. And then you can see here your eco mode price level and of course the actual price of the Lumina Strom or Avatar hourly tariff. So then you can see here your price level and then you see also instantly when the car is being charged. So whenever the energy from the, from the public grid is cheap, then the car will be charged in this area where the eco mode price level is uh, down below. So whenever it is cheaper than the seven cents, the car will be charged with. So with that, of course, it is possible to configure the eco mode price level whenever you want to. So you can watch the price chart for the next day, for example, and then set your eco mode price level uh, depending on how much you want to charge your car or how many energy you want to charge into your car. Okay, so the next point is now the low cost charging with PV surplus. And in that chapter, I want to show you how you can configure your Watt Pilot to make sure that you always charge with your PV surplus energy. And of course, this is very important for everyone who already has a PV system that he can use now his PV surplus energy to charge up his electric vehicle. So to configure it, our Watt Pilot, again, we go into the point settings and in the settings, we have now our point cost optimization. So again, we are clicking into cost optimization and under the flexible energy tariffs that we currently changed, we have now our point use PV surplus energy. And as you see, X factory, the use PV surplus energy is already activated. So this is already set in. So it is activated that you can use PV surplus energy. And another very important feature is that we have an automatic recognition of the inverter in that system. So whenever you have a Fronius inverter within your home Wi-Fi already integrated, and then you add up a new Fronius Watt Pilot, then for the first time, the Fronius Watt Pilot will automatically search for that inverter and then automatically connect to that inverter to make sure that the data is received from the inverter and that the PV surplus energy can be charged with. So in that case, as you see, all you need to do basically is plug in your electric vehicle, hit the eco mode or the next trip mode, and then you can instantly charge with the PV surplus energy. So no configuration more or less is needed here. All you can see is that PV surplus energy is activated. Of course, you can also deactivate it if you don't want to use it. And then, for example, if you have multiple inverters within your system, you can also choose from the inverters within that system. So, for example, in this case, we have uh, two different inverters in this system as well. And if you want to choose another inverter, of course, you can just click and select it and then choose that inverter as a master inverter where the information is coming from. If you have only one inverter in your system, of course, this is a very easy solution. The inverter is already selected. It is already configured. Uh, the PV surplus energy is activated and more or less you can start the PV surplus charging at once. Down below, we have now here the point PV surplus and these are the advanced settings. So whenever you want to modify your Watt Pilot, you want to change settings from standard, you can click into the PV surplus chart. Yeah, and first thing that we see here now is the starting power level that the Watt Pilot uses to start the PV surplus charging. So as you know, with every electric vehicle, we have a minimal charging power that needs to be charged with. And for the most electric vehicles, this is six amps single phase. So this is one pound three, eight kilowatts of power. That's the minimum charging power that we need to charge up the electric vehicle. So therefore X factory, uh, the starting power level is at one pound four kilowatts. And this makes sure that as the inverter delivers one pound four kilowatts of surplus energy, for example, then the watt pilot will start the charge and start the charge with single phase six amps with one pound four kilowatts of power. After that, of course, the Watt Pilot will um, alternate the current. So whenever there is more PV surplus energy, uh, you can dynamically follow this PV surplus energy. So the Watt Pilot will always choose the best possible 
voltage, the best possible um, current to charge the electric vehicle with. Second point here is to enable the zero feed-in function. So whenever you're using the zero feed-in function with, you, with your inverter, you can also enable it here directly into the app. So you can either activate or deactivate the zero feed-in. And whenever you're using that feature on your inverter, please also make sure that you activate it here in the watt pilot. So with the zero feed-in, you are then possible to not feed in energy at all into the public grid, but you are using it all with your watt pilot and your inverter. Yeah, the last button here is then our control behaviors. And with the control behaviors, you can now decide where the energy is coming from and of course how the energy is used. So we have three different settings. We have the default settings that is choose the X factory, but you can now also alternatively choose the prefer power from grid or prefer power to grid. So we are now charging with single amp charging steps. So single phase, that means 230 watts of power. And of course, what the watt pilot now does is he's changing this amperage steps to follow the PV surplus curve. And you can now um, define if you want to prefer power from grid. So that means that um, as soon as um, the 230 watts are not met, the watt pilot will draw the energy, that, that the power from the grid that is needed uh, to make sure that the next step is met. So the second step is then prefer power to grid. And this is, for example, very helpful for bigger PV systems um, that you can, for example, send power to grid and make sure that a little bit of the power is fed into the grid and the rest comes from the PV system. And with the default settings, it is now possible to divide these two amperage steps for, for, so for the 230 watts, um, the power is just divided into two. And then as soon as the 230 watts are met halfway, so to say, the watt pilot will switch the amperage, will switch the next, uh, um, the next step, so to say, and will switch to a higher power level. So of course, these settings can be adjusted very easily. They are also visualized down below here in the, in the visualization. And of course, you can alternate them, but there is no must for that, so you can do that optional. Whenever you are changing the settings, please also hit the save button to make sure that the settings are met. Okay, so the next button is now the next option that we have is the energy management settings with the own pilot and or the battery system. So whenever you are using the watt pilot in combination with a Fronius watt pilot, and or a battery, a stationary battery system. Of course, this is a very good solution for enabling the whole sector integration. And then you can come up with battery storage system. You can come up with electric vehicle charging. And of course, with hot water supply in form of the Fronius own pilot. And to enable that system, we have a very easy solution. Of course, our Fronius Watt Pilot solution takes all that into account. And we have now the possibility to uh, just alternate these settings and to make sure that the, the stationary battery system, the Fronius own pilot system and the Fronius watt pilot system works together as one in one big energy management system and that all these factors are integrated. So for enabling this energy management, you have the possibility to set two threshold factors. So first threshold sector is here under cost optimization again, the PV battery threshold. That threshold is set in state of charge percentage. So in this case, this is set with 20% state of charge of the stationary battery. And the second threshold is the ohm pilot threshold. And this is set in um, degrees Celsius. So in this case, this is X factory done with 20 degrees, um, 20 degrees of Celsius. So with these thresholds, it is now possible for you to set the energy management. So in this case, first use case, the customer wants to make sure that his battery storage system is at least charged to 20%. So for example, in the morning when the sun rises, uh, the battery system will be charged to 20% state of charge. 
and when that threshold is met, after that the watt pilot kicks in and the electric vehicle uses the energy to charge up the electric vehicle. So with that setting it is possible to make sure that your stationary battery system is charged to a minimum state of charge that you want to and to make sure that there is some energy available in the PV battery to make sure for example to cover up the nighttime loads during the night to make sure that you have some energy in your battery system. With that to say also you can do of course a prioritization of the loads. So in this case um, you have your uh, web interface of the Fronius inverter and within the web interface of the Fronius inverter you can also do the prioritization between Fronius own pilot and the stationary battery system. So in the web interface you can then switch the prioritization between battery system and own pilot and depending on what is more useful for you or more important for you, you can either set the battery system to prioritization number one or either set the own pilot to prioritization number one. Yeah, and the second threshold is now of course the threshold for the own pilot and this should make sure that there is a minimal temperature uh, available in the own pilot to make sure that this temperature is met before the watt pilot can, charge, uh, can start the charging process. So in this case we have three possibilities. So possibility number one is the battery system is the first um, important factor. So then we can set the state of charge value of the battery system to a specific value. After that value is reached, so for example in our case with the 20%, after that the watt pilot will start the charge. And uh, then of course, uh, last but not least, the own pilot will also heat up uh, with the remaining energy for example. Second possibility is then to set the own pilot to prioritization number one. Then you have to change that of course in the uh, invert settings. And then you can choose your threshold with uh, degrees of Celsius to make sure that there is a minimal temperature in your hot water system. Yeah, last but not least, of course, it is possible to set also the watt pilot to the first prioritization. So in this case, you will set a very low state of charge value, for example, for the battery to make sure that your watt pilot is at the first prioritization part. Yeah, and the last part is then, of course, to set the watt pilot to the last prioritization, so to prioritization number three. And to make sure that your PV battery system is charged to 100%, so in this case you will choose here 100%, and after that the own pilot will be uh, operated until these um, degrees of Celsius is met. And after that, so when the PV battery system is at 100%, or the own pilot is at its temperature, then the watt pilot will start the charging process. So as you see, you can very easily alternate these thresholds for making the energy management within the system. And of course, you can also set a prioritization to make sure that your PV battery system is operated, your own pilot is operated and your watt pilot is operated in the prioritization that you want. So next step that I want to go with you is the car settings. And now with your, our PV surplus energy charge, we have the point car settings where we can implement the different car models to make sure that the watt pilot always charge at the best specific rate and to make sure that your watt pilot is configured optimal for your personal car. So to alternate the different car settings, we have here the point cost optimization. And under cost optimization, we have uh, the point car. And with that car advanced settings, you can input uh, the specific settings that are good for your car. Of course, this point always is optional, so you don't need to do it. You can do it if you have a special car or if you want to alternate the settings on the charging process. So within our car, you can now very easily choose from our car list. So you might wonder, we only have some specific cars added here. That is when you have another car, for example, you have a different car from that list, you can just use our standard ch charging behavior. So whenever you don't find your car in that list, you have just chosen a very good car and this is then possible to use the standard charging behavior so this is good to go. When you are now for example driving a Renault Zoe, this has some specific configurations that need to be done. You can just choose 
the Renault Zoe from the list. And what you now see is our Fonius Watt pilot is configurating himself to the best possible options to charge up the Renault Zoe at the best rate, for example. So as you see down below here, the minimum current for charging start is now set to 10 amps. For example, the Renault Zoe needs at least 10 amps to, charge the st to start the charging process. And then the Watt pilot will configure it himself for optimal charging process of the Renault Zoe, for example. So what you can do now here in the car settings is to set this minimum current that your car needs, for example. Furthermore, you can choose the phase switching process. So for example, you can either choose only on free phase charging, you can charge only on one phase if you want to. And of course, best option is to automatically switch between single phase and free phase charging. As you know, our Fonius Watt Pilot has an automatic switch over between single phase and free phase charging. And with that option, it is automatically done for you so then, depending on the PV surplus energy, the Watt pilot will decide himself when to charge the uh, vehicle with single phase charging and want to, when to charge with free phase charging. Down below, you have your second threshold for the free phase power level, and this is set at X factory to 4.2 kilowatts of power. So you can, of course, alternate this value whenever you want to. So you can set it to, for example, also 5 kilowatts of power. So whenever you want to change it, you can do it right here. Uh, normally it is set to 4.2 kilowatts. So whenever there is 4.2 kilowatts of PV surplus energy, the Watt pilot will change the phases. He will switch to free phase charging and then will charge the car with free, free phases. So these 4.2 kilowatts are set, of course, again to the current. And in this case, this is free phase charging with six amps uh, current. And therefore this is the minimum charging power that the car needs. Yeah, then we have our forced uh, charging intervals and our simulate unplug functionality. And that simulate unplug functionality is very unique to the Watt Pilot and is a very good functionality to make sure that your electric vehicle is charged with PV surplus energy. So there are different car models. For example, we have uh, up below in the list, we have the Mitsubishi iMe, for example. And some of these models, they have the problem that after charging process takes place, when the charging process is finished or stopped, they fall asleep after a specific time. And the problem with that cars is when they fall asleep, they don't wake up again when the charging process starts again. So first use case, for example, you have a cloudy day and in the morning there is enough PV surplus energy to charge the car. So the charging process starts in the morning and then at lunchtime there is uh, clouds over the PV generator. So there is not enough PV surplus energy to charge the car. So the charging process is stopped intermediately. And then in the afternoon at the evening, there is again a PV surplus energy and the car wants to charge up the electric vehicle again. So the Watt pilot wants to start the charging process again. And the problem with that cars is that the charging process now can't start normally because they felt asleep and they don't, walk, don't wake up again. And this is now where our simulate unplug functionality takes place. So in this case with the simulate unplug functionality, the Watt pilot makes sure to wake up the car again. So it gives the car a signal uh, that it thinks it would have been unplugged and plugged in again. And with that functionality, the car wakes up again to make sure uh, that the charging process can continue and that your vehicle is being charged again. So of course, these optionalities, they are all optional. You don't have to set these settings, but you can do it optional as you wish, as you want to. And it is always too good uh, to it is always a good idea to have this simulate unplug functionality activated to make sure that your electric vehicle is charged um, with PV surplus energy. So next up we have our charging modes and therefore I want to show you our first charging mode that you can use to charge your electric vehicle with. So the first mode I want to show you is our eco mode and with the eco mode you have the possibility to always make sure that you have the cheapest possible rate for charging up your electric vehicle and that your electric vehicle is charged of course with PV surplus energy. 
So for activate the eco mode, this is very easily done. You can either select it directly on the Wattpilot device. So you have your button at the front of the device and you can just select the eco mode with a single press on that button so you can select the eco mode. Within the app, this is also possible with our mode selector down here. So you can click on the mode and then you see here we have the possibility to either select the eco mode or select the next trip mode. So in the first place, we are now selecting the eco mode and hit the save button to activate the echo mode. After that you can see here we have the echo mode activated. You see it with this little leaf here and then down below you also see the stators and in this case the car is being charged with one pound four kilowatts because there is a PV surplus energy. In details you can also see where the energy is coming from. So in this case we are charging with one pound four kilowatts of the PV system. This is a current of six amps and because of the eco mode the car is being charged purely on PV power. So there is no energy drawn from the public grid and no energy drawn of course from the battery system. So as you see for the eco mode this is a very easy system and of course um, under the settings you can now implement different settings as we have talked before to make sure that the eco mode charges your electric vehicle whenever you want to and whenever the energy is cheap. Next up we have our second charging mode and this is the next trip mode. And with the next trip mode, it is now possible that you can configure a minimum charging energy. So a minimum energy for charging up your electric vehicle up to a specific departure time. So whenever you want to make sure, for example, use case number one, you want to leave the house in the next day at seven o'clock and you want to make sure that you have charged at least, for example, 60 kilometers of range into your car. The next trip mode will now charge the electric vehicle of course in the first place if possible with PV surplus energy and with the cheap energy tariff. But on the other hand when for example on a cloudy day there is no PV surplus energy the next trip mode will make sure that your car is being charged to this specific amount of energy until the departure time. So with the next trip mode you always have the assurance that the car is being charged and that your car is being charged at the next day. So for configuring the next trip mode, this is pretty similar to the eco mode. All we need to do is in our landing page, in our starting page here on the charging, we can now select our next trip mode. And in the next trip mode, we have now the possibility to configure it here. We had the eco mode and second mode is now the next trip mode. And we want to activate the, uh, the next trip mode by just clicking it here on the button. And after that, we hit the save button to activate the next trip mode. So for the next trip mode, I can either activate it directly in the app or I can just press the button on the front side of the device, of the device itself to activate eco mode or next trip mode. So we will also see it with the LEDs with the LED light on the front side of the device that the next trip mode is activated. Okay, what we now see here is um, the next trip mode that waits for the charge. And of course, we can also configure the next trip mode in this button here. So with this little clock symbol, we can enter it and then we have the next trip mode available. And here we can do our settings when we want to uh, define a minimum charging in, in kilowatt hours or kilometer. So in this case, for example, we take the case that it is Sunday and we know tomorrow is Monday and we want to leave the house and uh, go to work again. And therefore we know we need at least 60 kilometers of range. As you see, this corresponds to 10 kilowatt hours of electrical energy. And the car should be finished, finished at, for example, seven o'clock in the morning. So with the next trip mode, we have now the assurance that at seven o'clock in the morning, the car will be charged at least 60 kilometers of range. So of course, the next trip mode will now make sure that with possible that with the PV surplus energy, the car is being charged. But for example, in the winter term, when there is no PV surplus energy, these 60 kilometers of range, these 10 kilowatt hours of energy will be charged also from the public grid or of course from the battery storage system if you have one to make sure that these 60 kilometers of range are implemented into the car. 
Yeah, another very nice functionality is then our button down here. It says remain in eco mode. And that means uh, that when you are charging in next trip mode and you are maybe your plans are changing and you are not leaving the house at seven o'clock and let's say you are still not leaving the house. So after these 60 kilometers of charge at seven o'clock in the morning, then the Watt Pilot will remain in eco mode again and to make sure that also PV surplus energy that comes up, for example, at 10 o'clock uh, will be charged into the car. So with that, you have the free possibility to decide when you want to charge your car and how you want to charge it. So when we have done the configuration correctly, we click the save button. And after that, we can see in details uh, what uh, is going on right now. And in this case, we can then see where the energy is coming from for charging the car. And uh, then we can see also when the next trip will be activated. So the next setting is now the setting of the charging timer. So the charging timer is always very helpful when you have, for example, no PV system, when you don't charge with PV surplus energy and maybe also no flexible energy tariff is available for you, but you want to use high energy tariffs and low energy tariffs. Same case, for example, if you are using cheap nighttime tariffs, when you have, for example, a cheap energy tariff in the nighttime, and you know from 9 p.m. in the evening up to 6 a.m. in the morning, you have a very cheap energy tariff and you want to use that to charge up your electric vehicle. So the setting of the charge timer can be done very easily. All you need to do basically is go to settings. And in settings, we have here our charging scheduler. And within the configuration of the charging scheduler, you can decide every weekday, you can decide for Saturday and you can decide for Sunday an extra scheduler function. Here on the top, we have the functionality. We can either disable the scheduler so that it is not functional. We can allow charging during these times or we can block charging at these times. So for example, with blocked charging, you can make sure that uh, the Watt Pilot will not charge uh, during the specific times that you define. On the other hand side, you can say allow charging and then you can, for example, define that the Watt Pilot will charge from 11 p.m. in the afternoon up to 6 a.m. at the next day in the morning. So with that, it is no problem to integrate uh, scheduled charging and to make sure that your car is being charged with a cheap energy tariff during the night time and to make sure that you can use this high and low energy tariffs whenever you want. You can do that of course for the weekday, you can also configure it for Saturday and for Sunday extra. So to make sure for example that you need your nighttime charge during the office hours and on weekdays for example you can disable it. Again, when you have configured it, please hit the save button that it is um, stored, that it is changed, and then you are good to go to use the scheduler function. So one of the last parts for today is the configuration of the ID chips. So the assignment of charging times and the energy amounts. So whenever you have multiple persons um, accessing the Watt Pilot device, it is possible to define up to 10 ID chips, RFID ID chips to the Watt Pilot itself. So this should make sure that whenever somebody wants to charge with the Watt Pilot, that you have access to it. So whenever you are installing the Watt Pilot in a semi-public or public place, of course you want to make sure that nobody else but you and the persons who should uh, have access to the device. And therefore we can configure our ID chips and this is a very smart and easy process that I want to show you. So first of all, all you need to do is go to settings and then under settings we have down below here our point with security. And under security we can either define our access control. So in this case we can define under access control that the charge port should either be open for all. So that means you just plug and play. Or you can uh, 
require an authentication. So when you now set the required authentication, then you have to uh, plug in an ID chip or an RFID card to start the charging process. Next up, we then have the mode for the cable unlock. So with the cable unlock, this is a very smart function. You can decide between three different options. So in the standard mode, this behavior is then like a normal public charging station. So the charging cable, the type 2 cable that is connected to the car, will stay locked when the charging process is finished and will unlock itself when you open up, when you unlock the car and want to unplug the cable. Yeah, then we have of course the auto unlock functionality and uh, this is a very smart feature for all Watt Pilot that are installed as a, um, as a community use. So in the case, for example, when you have one Watt Pilot device and you have multiple cars that you want to charge with, let's say you are living in a community house and with the auto unlock function, the cable on the Watt Pilot device will unlock itself after the charging process of a car has been finished. So for example, if you have two cars in your garage, you can just unplug the type two cable after the charging process, it is not locked to the station and therefore a second person can use the charging station as well and can plug his car without the need of unlocking the, the, the second car. Yeah, and the third point is then always locked and this is of course the use case for a stationary use when you have the Watt Pilot fixed installed in your garage and you don't want to unplug the Watt Pilot so you can just always lock the Type 2 cable and then the Type 2 lock is always on and then it is not possible to remove the Type 2 cable at all so you don't have the necessity to um, unplug the cable and move it away from the station you can just leave it locked on the station at all. Yeah, and the last part, it is a very smart functionality. It is the unlock during power outage functionality. And maybe some of you already had this um, bad situation that when you come to your, back to your car and let's say um, you had, for example, a public charger, you had a public socket and um, you had the charging plug, um, uh, there was a failure, AC current failure, and therefore the, um, the power line was deactivated. And normal, under normal circumstances, then for the most charging stations, the type two cable will stay locked and will not unlock itself. And therefore we have our unlock during power outages function. So that means that when there is a power outage during charging, that the type two cable unlocks itself and you are able to disconnect the cable and are able to drive away. So with that, it is possible that we avoid this bad situation when there is a power outage, that you are not locked to the station and that you can remove your type two cable and drive away even during power outages. So if you want to, you can add up for, the, for these uh, options and then you can use these options as you want to. So last thing is here the ground check. Of course you can enable and disable the ground check if you want to. So this lies on the country that you're using it. And then we have down here, we have our ID chips. And in the point ID chips, you can see your 10 users that are configured for the Watt Pilot. And then of course you can choose user one, for example, you can give that user a name. You can name it, for example, customer one. And then you can save this new customer and learn an ID chip to it. So in this case, you can just learn the ID chip to it and then have the possibility to just add a new customer, for example, or add a new um, user of the Watt Pilot. And then you can instantly see the amount of energy that's being charged with, with that ID card. So as you see, this is a very easy functionality and very easy also to enable. Yeah, last but not least, down here you can set the password for the Watt Pilot. So in case you want to rechange the password, you can do it right here. So next up, we then have, of course, the energy usage. And therefore we go on to charging. And the second part is here, range. And then you can see here the energy per user. And when you click on energy per user, you see here the different user profiles that you have added. So here we see again our customer one, he has charged zero kilowatt hours of energy. 
Yeah, it is then possible, of course, to also implement uh, different times and uh, charging energy. So when you see, uh, for example, when you want to add up uh, CVS uh, data, you can just download the data from the Wattpilot itself and make sure that you have a locked data from charging times and used energy. So this is not a problem at all. You can instantly use that functionality and have a visualization of the charging processes that are done. And then of course, make sure that, for example, you know who has charged how long and how many energy was during the charging process. Okay, for further information, please also make sure uh, to check out our Fronius white papers, our Fronius webinars and our Fronius trainings. So we have different trainings available for you uh, if you're interested in more functionality of the Wattpilot and to get also a very wide and unique overview over the Wattpilot and the functionalities, please make sure to check out our online trainings. You can see them on the Fronius homepage. And of course you can see there our webinars and trainings that are available. New training is now of course our e-mobility and heating solutions training. So if you want to see more information about the Wattpilot, Please make sure to check out this online training, just register on our website and then you have access to that information. Furthermore, you can find more information, of course, on our YouTube channel. We have more videos and webinars about the Word Pilot there. So if you want to gain more information about the different solutions, about the different topics, you can see them on YouTube. Okay, so after all, the Word Pilot will be available in May 2021. So as you see, we are starting right now with the Watt Pilot, And of course, you will have access to it over your wholesaler. So whenever you're interested in ordering the Watt Pilot, just make sure to order at your wholesaler. Okay, so thank you for your participation today. Thank you for your attendance. I hope I could give you a small and quite few overview about the functionality of the Watt Pilot. And I hope you will have the opportunity to charge yourself soon. In this case, of course, we stand for the Watt Pilot like charging on my terms. As you see, we have very unique functionality integrated in the Watt Pilot and we'll make sure that you always can charge at the lowest possible rate. So in this case, I hope this was informative for you. Uh, we see us the next time, hopefully in an online training or in webinar. Please stay tuned to our solutions. And in this case, stay healthy and keep charging. Until the next time, goodbye. See you soon. Bye-bye.